Hello Makers, it's Marion. Have you ever wanted to knit a picture into your knitting? Well, I'm going to show you how and it really isn't as hard as it looks. Okay, so let's have a look at different kinds of colour work and what we use the intarsia method for. To work these intarsia things, we use little bobbins of yarn. I'm just going to show you the inside of this tank top. So what we do is knit along, then pick up a different colour, knit along, then pick up a different colour and carry on. And if I show you in our lovely reindeer here, so if you're working from a chart, so you're knitting this way and purling this way, so you knit along here, then you need to change colour to the fawn colour, knit in the fawn, change back to cream and come back here. Then you come back this way, change colour, back change colour and then when you get into this which is more complicated you're going to knit along here change colour change colour change colour all the way across so on the back of this you can see exactly how it's done so as you're I mean we're purling purling this way um, you can see how the colours changing but secured here and this is where you change from bobbin to bobbin so let's get started. So what we're going to knit is just a, a rectangle with a different colour rectangle inside. And just to show you the back, you can see where I've picked up and put down the bobbins and I've left these long tails so that I can show you later how to sew those in. So instead of spending lots of money on very fancy bobbins, um, what I've done is I have wound some yarn onto a couple of pieces of paper. If I'm working on a chart and the rectangle I'm going to put in, so it starts about here and finishes about here, that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm good. this is just normal stocking stitch. Um, there's a video for that on our lovely channel if you want to go and have a look. But it's basically just a row of plain knitting and then a row of purl. So I'm going to knit up to where, whoopsie, I'm going to knit up to where our colour block begins. So here is the point that I'm going to change colour. So I'm going to take my little bobbin of purple. This is Debbie Bliss Cash Merino Aran, if you're wondering, which is divine, lovely, beautiful, soft yarn to knit with. Now, for the first colour change, um, it's going to be a little bit baggy, not quite secure, but we'll sort that out later. So I'm going to use the purple. So I'm going to knit into the stitch and then use my new colour to come through. Now for the next stitch, I'm going to use my little purple colour on the bobbin, but to make sure that it's nicely secured here, I'm just going to make sure that the colour change yarn is always the one that's sitting underneath your working yarns. So make sure that's always under, and that will secure the edges. So I'm going to knit the length in the pink, in the purpley pink, and now I want to change back to the grey. So I'm going to use this little bobbin of grey. If I tried to use my grey working yarn, which is the one that's attached to the ball, you'd have a loop at the back of the work that would be absolutely massive and that would be no good at all. So we start off with another little bobbin, this time of the same colour of grey. I'm going to put my needle in and just loop the new colour, leaving a good healthy tail to sew in. I put the new colour on and knit it in and I'm going to make sure this time that the grey yarn is underneath this pink and that way it's going to tuck these ends, just tuck those in really neatly. So then I'm going to knit to the end of the row and then I'm going to turn the work and we're going to purl across the back. Now whenever you have these bobbins you just need to be mindful that you're not going to get anything too tangled and so even though it's very tempting not to mess around with them and just sort of keep knitting, I absolutely urge you don't 
turn or do anything complicated with them tangled because the more if you think oh I'll leave it a couple of rows they just will get really tangled so we've got our little two extra bobbins there so for this section I'm going to knit with the bobbin grey up to here I'm going to change colour and when I get down to here I'm going to knit with this which is the the yarn that's attached to the working yarn to the ball so I'm going to purl back to where we're going to change colour with my yarn that's on the bobbin. Apologies for this, these needles are very long. Hope you can see that. Now, here we are at the point where we need to change colour. And here is the pink that's attached to my bobbin. To make sure that we don't end up with a hole, I'm going to take the pink yarn, this little bobbin, I'm going to make sure that it goes under the yarn we were using before. And you'll see why now. So if I make sure it's underneath, when I purl this stitch, just purl another one, you can see that it neatly just catches the yarn from the bobbin so that we don't end up with any sort of gaping holes through the work. So on we go with the pink. And then coming up now to the next color change. So there's the last pink stitch. And now we're going to change back to the gray. So again, I'm going to make sure that the yarn colour that we're changing to is underneath the pink. I'm going to pick it up and knit, or purl in this case, these next couple of stitches. And again, you can see there that by putting the grey underneath, it has captured and secured that pink yarn so that we won't have a hole. So I'm going to just purl to the end there. This is using the yarn that's attached to the ball. And then really carefully turn the work around. Now at this point you think, oh, spaghetti, it's all very tangled. But you've just got to take a minute to separate those bobbins up and make sure that everything is ready to go for your next row. And you can see here that because we looped the yarn behind each time, we don't have any holes in the work. So you carry on like this, and then I'll show you how to um, stitch these ends in. So you can see where I've switched the yarn, and on the back, you can see each time where I've changed colour, I've been catching in the ends. Now if I switch over to my finished swatch, it's sometimes when you do a lot of colour changes, it can look a bit lumpy and bumpy until you block it later on, which just sort of evens out the tension. But at the back here, what we need to do now is to sew in the edges to neaten this up. And this is very important because obviously this is the inside of your jumper, but you or your whatever it is that you're knitting but you want it to be just as neat on the outside as it is in the inside because it's going to sit next to your skin this bit right let's have a look at sewing up so let's have a look at how we sew this in um because the ends have been caught up each time there isn't there isn't a hole here but if you know if you make a mistake and there is a hole don't panic because when you come to sewing your ends you can just very easily secure any little holes with a, with a little darning needle. So these are the ends here. I'm just going to go back and sew them along so that they absolutely are not gonna come undone. Um, don't skimp on this because the last thing you want is a hole in the pictures. Um, so I'm just gonna take this up here a little bit under the pearls and down these pearls just to make sure. Okay. And then snip that off. Whoopsie. 
Someone's just giving me these little snippers and they're lovely but they're a bit scary. So, and I'm going to take this yarn here and do similar. There we go. You can't see any holes in there. And when that's blocked out um, and on a sweater, you wouldn't, you know, it's a nice clean join. You wouldn't see any holes. When you've got loads and loads of ends to sew in, and this is a chunkier yarn, so it's a little bit more jumbled on the back and lots of different color changes. Um, you just take the yarns and tuck them wherever you can to keep them out of the way so that you keep the work as flat as possible. And that is how we knit intarsia. So now you've mastered the intarsia method, you can knit pictures into absolutely anything. So a great project to work on is this Paintbox Yarns interchangeable motif sweater. It's a free pattern from Paintbox and all you have to do is knit the basic sweater with the motif in the middle using that intarsia method. If you could knit a picture into a jumper, what would it be? Tell me in the comments and who knows, we might even make a chart for you. Happy knitting! Did the intarsia technique. And, uh, oh. <laughs> oh, come on, Marion. It's half a glass of wine, I'm useless.